Um, so we originally called the project that is like, it's ongoing. We had an intense phase just the last three weeks, but it's a project that started already a couple of months ago. And in fact, we started to have the first ideation meeting two years ago, and it will continue another year. And uh, we call it Urosh, but we're slowly thinking maybe we call it Rosha. So um, we, we did it in Slovenia, which is somewhere between Italy, Hungary, Croatia, and Austria. Um, it's a country that joined the European Union like 20 years ago. Um, and I've been working there before, like over the last 10 years, I even lived there for a while. Um, so we call it Urosh because since the beginning, when we I got personally, I got an invitation to work um, with a local network of art, technology, and society that is called Cons to do a project, whatever it is. Um, pretty free, what I wanted to do, but um, because I had some friends already there involved in like open science hardware, I thought it's nice to pick it up again the topic, and work on kind of a locally adapted project research phase um, in Maribor. I called it Urosh, which means ubiquitous rural open science hardware. The sh with this like funny character on it, it's sh in Slovenian language. So it kind of puts the SZH or whatever it's called, SH into one letter, which makes it easy. And to kind of connect to the vision or the, the, the roadmap of GOSH, which may is make, to make open science hardware ubiquitous by 2025, I thought I call it ubiquitous rural open science hardware, using the opportunity to kind of promote some of the projects that we have in the network to the local scene, and also research a bit more in detail to what extent some of the stuff we have in the network can be applicable, applicable to a rural context, to a context in the more agricultural setting. It doesn't mean big scale farming. It can also mean like just people living in the rural area with their own little farms. Um, the interest a lot that we had is more from small scale people that are interested in permaculture or they have a little garden or they have it maybe also some kind of a fab lab or weird geek lab that is more in the countryside. And in fact, we have seen a bit, a lot of people that I know from the last 10, 20 years that maybe had a very active life in the media art scene, open source scene. Meanwhile, they moved somewhere to the countryside to a farm. Maybe it's age, I'm 45. Maybe that's what people do at our age. And so this brought us a bit together. Let's, let's focus a bit on this rural context um, partially, the idea was initiated also with longer discussions we had with Nano, because he already, and he will maybe talk a bit more about this, he's actively like a hacker geek, but he also got involved in a local open laboratory for agroecology in Mendoza. And we had this idea on this discussion before, is it even valuable, some of these scientific equipment that we keep promoting that are partially research instruments, we talk a lot about citizen science. Are they really applicable if we are on the farm in the countryside and also some of the peers we work with maybe come from very different backgrounds. They're not hackers, they're not scientific researchers, but you know they maybe make wine or something else. So this was a bit the starting idea. Um, to use the opportunity of this like funding that we also received um, to do some work on kind of this rural context. In the end, sadly, I didn't have so much time to spend in the really, like say, rural context. I spend most of my time in a city that is called Maribor. It has 100,000 people, but it is rural enough compared to some like mega cities that some people of us know. Um, and we had some opportunities to go and visit um, local farmers, but I think that would be the next step that we're gonna do. Um, maybe Nano, you wanna say a few things about when when you started in fact it was your idea can we use this laboratory equipment in in your setup i think mostly we talked about the microscope at that time and the co2 sensors sure yeah well i'm i'm, I'm also part of a cooperative that makes uh, fruit juice and wine and we run a farm a small farm 
outside the city. So my idea was to, I don't know, play a little bit with the, the things that we do, like microscopes, uh, for instance, and see if we can use them at some point to understand what what are we doing with uh, our our practices or, or the changes that we we make in the farm and so that was the the idea just to to play around and see if the people that is not so uh, hardware friendly as us uh, find our tools useful and and that was the, the main idea just to to bring something that is not uh, natural let's say in a farm to the farm and see what's the effect no and it was i don't know it was really interesting to to see what what happened there because the I mean, my idea was to set up just a, a small lab, like a, some furniture and, and some stuff, and and make some workshops. And and many people came. Like I mean, it was more interesting for people to to go and see a lab than to go and see what we are making there. I mean, and so like I don't know almost 60 uh, persons are, arrived there to the workshops and mainly students from, from the agricultural university here. And some of them, it was the first time that we're looking at soil with the microscope. So they were like, like really, really happy to, to find those things there. So it was, it was a, a really good experience. Uh, and I think it's going to, to keep going. I mean, I have to understand how, but, uh, but, but I think it's a, our tools are, are useful because at least in, in our context, people is not used to, to have them have them around or are really expensive so so i think uh, it's it's interesting for them to 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 have the possibility to play with those things even if they are not going to to use them in their everyday life at least once i think they 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 find them at least i, I mean looking at some at some creatures under the microscopes gives them like something it's like a it was like a, a, a like a, a goal in a football in a football in a soccer uh, play i mean it was like they were like crazy when some creature appeared on the screen and i think at least that gives them the the conscious that there is something there. They know there is something there, but it was the first time that they were able to, to see that. So I don't know. I think it's what we did. It was really, really interesting. I mean, I, the microscope is something that connected us to, and it's also a, an old project that we have been developing for many years. Um, it's also, uh, so when, when we did this, and I want to talk a bit more about the format that we have chosen for these Urosh activities, um, instead of like inventing something new or whatever, we were thinking, let's just revisit some of these projects we already had, oh, some of them also successful, revisit them, look a bit at the different places where we have used them, and the microscope is one of, ex one of the examples. So we have chosen a few topics that already existing in the open science hardware networks um, and kind of revisited them in this collaborative group and reflected a bit, what, where can we use it? Which ones work better in which context? Where does it make sense to, let's say, make a bit more advanced equipment? 
where does it make sense to make maybe a more low cost equipment this was a bit the goal and it's not finished yet this is the goal of our research and the microscope is one i think key example because a lot of us have a lot of experience in making this do it yourself open hardware microscopes and what what nano just said i, I have this experience before um, it is always a very nice workshop to do with the general audience to bring in the idea of of a low cost open shared equipment to see the world in kind of totally a new magnet magnitude and farming soil is like of course a, a, a topic where everybody's interested so when we started with this urosh project um, we thought let's pick a few projects we already have and one was the these microscopes um, other ones um, were the co2 sensors to analyze um, the respiration and the, the release of co2 from microbes in the soil and other topics were spectrometers and i don't know there's a few others you can look it up on the on the list uh, and what we also tried is like nano has some experience with one setup let's try this setup also in this other place here um, let's also reflect on on where where can we even buy those materials is it accessible in different places in the world so some of our collaborators are in Argentina, like nano others are in indonesia we were locally in slovenia while you know the other people were you know coming to slovenia from switzerland spain and also we had a collaborator in japan japan um, it might make sense for some projects to like develop a more high-end research equipment like the open flexure microscope that's something we looked at and i think it's really nice in the gosh community that we also try to reproduce projects from other groups um, so i have never worked with it i of course observed the open flexure microscopy project but so i use the opportunity now is this an a project that i can rebuild easily from the instruction that is available is there maybe also play things I can improve from the existing design? Or is it maybe if we go to the farm or the agriculture, the wrong project, maybe we can do another one. And so this is a bit the, the framework where we set up this thing. Also, we had a few other microscopy projects already lying around. Um, Was Gaudens, who is also in the call. I think last spring, after years of like the idea, we should really build a fluorescence microscope. We had a few rough prototypes. He made a new prototype. So we thought, OK, let's come together and we all build the same um, edition of a fluorescence microscope, um, redesign it to like from the first experiences and also have the other people in the other parts of the world recreating the same project at the same time to learn a bit kind of from each other. Um, what did I say? It's a bit late. Um, yeah, so uh, what, what I thought was really interesting as a kind of event format was that that we don't use the event so much to invent something new, but to kind of revisit existing projects from each other and put everybody on the on the kind of same stage. And this needs a lot of time, I figured out. And unlike, let's say, the global GOSH event, which is a three, four days unconferences, symposium style of event, these kind of collaborative research projects, they need time. We order material, we print the, this kind of open hardware. But we had this kind of shared uh, group of, of researchers that kept you know, in the loop every day with each other almost. We had regular meetings. We had some people coming together. We work on the same project at the same time in different parts of the world. And this is, I, I would prefer, in fact, to also have feedback from some of the other people on how, how this format of a kind of collaborative, partially locally, partially online distributed event can be really fruitful to kind of push our community a bit forward. Awesome. Um, Mark, if that is the end of the reflections, I can go ahead and end the recording and we can continue on with more of a discussion, if that's good. I don't think it's the end. There's a much more to tell, but um, I don't know, is there a, there's a time schedule? 
Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Both you all. Uh, when you're doing your, your uh, microscope work with soil and your other soil, you know, the uh, CO2 and things like that, is that stuff that would show up well on a screen if you like did like a, a video recording of some of this stuff and maybe with some of your participants? Uh, uh, if you did something like that, I would watch it with great interest and I would show it to a bunch of people around here and try to get them interested in doing this kind of stuff. That'd be, that'd be very, anyway, uh, yeah, if you totally. want to do, if you, you yeah, ever do, do that, I'm in, okay? I usually, when we have a call like this, at least two of the cameras are set up with microscopes and not these webcams here. This is kind of usually how we have Zoom meetings. It's like, <laughs> Um, when a lot of these do-it-yourself microscopes are based on webcams. So instead of this webcam from the laptop, I just choose in Zoom or whatever my browser, the other webcam. And then I have this microscopic image. And so what we have been investigating is a bit, when is it worth to use a $3 webcam? When, when might it be more useful to have a $30 webcam and stuff like this is what we are checking. We're still working on it. Uh, so we just started some of the stuff that hasn't even been delivered yet. Um, I would like, in fact, to get a bit some questions. Um, I'm a bit, it's a bit late. I had some like three other meetings just tonight. So when you, when you take pictures of the soil, like what are the, what is the time scale of the processes? Like, is it extremely quick or very slow compared to like 30 frames per second camera? Um, so when we used also the opportunity um, with Nano and Julian, another collaborator, that we, you know, we used also the money we had to make a little brochure about how to do soil microscopy as a workshop set up to look at the, the small animals, mostly that live in the soil. Um, these animals, they, the ones that we look at, they crawl around, so they're funny to look at, so it's like live action on the camera. Some of them just like have special shapes and not even walking around. But I know what you mean, like some processes that you can look at in the microscopes are very slow. This is also interesting when then you can just do time lapse. The really fast processes, I don't think they're so relevant for what we have been looking at at the moment. So the frame rate was not so much an issue, more the sensitivity. I see, I see. Yeah. No, just because, yeah, I, because I know that there are some sensors, right, which, uh, which for instance, with Raspberry Pi, you can record high speed, while with others you can. So that's why I asked. So we got some of these Raspberry Pi cams also. We haven't, we haven't been, like, sadly, they've just been shipped now, and the project in Slovenia is over. It had a bit some delays. So we want to exactly look for which processes or for which environments, which cameras are most suitable and write it down a bit on the Gosh forum, which some other people have already looked at. Um, frame rate for some processes it is interesting. Huh? Um, I've been, you know, the best, like the best frame rate is like, it's nice to have, especially just if you want to look at motion or like more doing deep research of motion of worms or something. But I think for the workshop setting to get people um, just like happy to see some creatures in the soil, I came a bit to the conclusions, then the cheap one will do all, all the work the best. Um, I know they are, well, I will just ask, um, what are the different prototypes? Can you maybe share them and so on? Because I, I know of the open lecture and I thought about, um, because I ref have a Raspberry Pi at home to build it at home, but you have to buy a lot of lenses, you have to buy a lot of different things. Um, is there an easier um, digital microscope um, that is the way to go, so to say? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So when we have documented our work on the wiki, it's it's um, here on the on the chat. You find it, and I also put something on the Gosh forum um, a few days ago about revisiting the DIY microscopes. Um, most of the microscope I've been building are with a $3 webcam you put in your computer. 
and then you just flip upside down the lens and you put some some mechanism it costs five dollars and you don't need a 3d printer nor some special tools and they work perfectly to to look at at, at stuff huh? they work perfectly to make this what nano said this wow element of like a goal in soccer or whatever metaphor he used and they work to a certain extent also to do like continuous research what what i figured a bit out with the open flex from microscope it's I think it's highly engineered, over-engineered, because if you have a lot of government funding for research in, in academia, that's what you come up with. And it does impress academics. So if you want to connect to academics with an open science hardware tool, this is perfect to show them. They love it. But if you want to reach other people, I think it's too complicated. It's too much work to do it. It's kind of, I don't know what benefit it has for the work I want to do is like more reaching people. Look, we can look at the soil together and stuff like this. So we really have to figure out what you want to use the tool with. But now what we tried the last couple of weeks is there to figure out if there is something a bit in the middle that is very much more simple than the open flexor to build, cheaper also, but still is quality is good enough to, to have more sensitive, sensible data from, from the from the images. Huh? So we were looking exactly a bit in between and it's kind of documented and it's an open discussion in the Ghost Forum to talk about this. Yeah, as Mark says, it, it really depends on what you want to do. I used uh, open flexure, but the, because we, we, I and a friend, Paolo, we already had like a, a few of them already built it. So uh, it was easy to set up, but but it's true that it's not easy to find all the lenses, and and at some point it it doesn't have. I mean, maybe it's, it's too much effort if you are not doing like some academic research or something like more regular, and if you want just to to have this the the <laughs> this effect on people to see something for the first time is, is better to the, the do-it-yourself criteria approach. I mean, that's my experience, no? I see, yeah, fair. Um, just hard, right, to find a good compromise between uh, expensive and flashy, but and easy because I mean I know of the approaches right. It's, you use even your phone and then another lens from a CD player and then you have a microscope, but in practice it's very it's not very useful to see anything, to look for anything I guess that you're looking for in a sample. Like those easier microscopes, they have a stage to move around or or it's something very basic. And that's exactly what we tried to revisit. Um, so oh, yeah. the X, Y stage, you can do it by hand. Huh? You just have to kind of smoke a cigarette so you're not shaking and then slowly do it like this. Um, mechanic, mechanical stages are interesting. We looked at it for optimization for image taking and we built a few additions of that. But this is exactly what I want to find out. Uh, is there some kind of a sweet spot in between that kind of is more suitable for also research purposes, but then it's also a bit more accessible, like by the price and by the complexity of building it and also sourcing the materials. It's exactly what we have been working on. And one, one thing is like when we try to promote open science hardware as a kind of idea, if we talk to a university somewhere, we might want to show the open flexure work um, thing. When we also want to, let's say, go to the schools, we might show another project to really, let's say, inspire thousands of people. I just shared a video from my Indonesian friend. Um, so we did this workshop on microscopes 10 years ago, and he's an agricultural scientist, and he just like picked it up like crazy. He did like 100 workshops on the topic, visiting hundreds of schools in Indonesia, so I think we have to, to think a bit where we want to promote the open science hardware. Huh? On the farm, it's one thing. In, in academic setting, it's one thing. In schools, it's another thing. Huh? And this is exactly what we are researching now. And we have now a couple of months to also write this up, 
um, reflect on, on the recent experience and upcoming experiences. Yeah, cool. How about, so what, maybe what I want to finish is like, besides some technicalities or whatever, um, it was for me a really nice experience to have some funding. We have an existing like small group of, of people that we already know each other, most of us, not all of us. And we had this time to, to, to do these projects. And we all, I think all of the people involved now in this Urosh are not, let's say, academic researchers, but we're kind of one foot inside, one foot outside. Um, but it's fantastic to have these like small focus groups. And this is something I would like to discuss in the wider GOSH community um, that, that we should kind of, instead of just waiting for another big GOSH event, we should organize these small research projects. Um, in our case, we, we choose in a mixed model of online remote collaborators and on-site kind of flying people from Paris, flying people from Switzerland and Spain together and work with the local community. Um, so this format, I don't know, I, I haven't really heard so much other, like it's, it's not really a hackathon, it's much more a longer durational event because it needs time to, to do stuff, to order stuff, to print stuff, to develop stuff, to visit people. So I would like maybe to have a bit of a reflection with other people about a format that we could propose or, or reflect on. I, I can say that for me it was uh, great to to make this collaboration because uh, something that I wanted to do was to have like my research locally. I mean, we were connected, but uh, I I was able to to show uh, what I do here and and this uh, uros. Urosh, uh, it was the possibility to, to do so. I mean, I, I've started to, to this idea of the, the agroecology lab like a long time ago, but this was like the kickstart of, the, of that idea. And, and I think it's interesting to, to have this mixed, uh, let's say mixed residence where I, I can do almost whatever I want here, and, but I'm connected with some other people that is doing something similar in, in a different place. And, and I think also that it's interesting that this long lasting collaboration, I mean, it's not two days, it's like, we're talking like, like Mark says, like two years ago, we started to talk about this and we are like, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's real now, but I think we are like, you know, I mean, from my side, I have the, the interest to, to, to keep uh, going with this a little bit to, to, to really explore further uh, what, what, we, what can we bring to the, to the rural environment. So for me, it was like a really great experience. So Miranda oh, yeah. made, made most of the connections to the local rural society. I was just stuck in a hack lab. What do you think? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, it was it was nice that there. I'm sorry that you got stuck in the hack lab the whole time. Although I'm not because you were doing good work, but um, <clears throat> also in terms of the structure, having like a, a fixed sort of space and community and sort of a family. I started calling calling it the Urosh family, but then we were also splitting up and going on different uh, field trips and sites to do and pursuing our different interests, which was, I think, really great. Also, just coming home in the evening and like, oh yeah, how was the, how was the agri science experimental farm, you know, or like, oh, how was the, 
hemp plantation or whatever, you know? Um, so all sorts of exciting things, which I think is great. Maybe leads to a bit of FOMO sometimes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Um, cool. I know that it is almost 15 minutes till 10 p.m. UTC or whenever the closing time is for everyone all over the world. But uh, with that being said, is there any other closing thoughts? I can go ahead and, and end this recording. But yeah, if there's any other final thoughts, go ahead. So Urosh is still like going on and I'm still like suggesting to the larger ghost community that we could do another event like more like... Uh, like this was more like the three, four weeks or whatever months of hacking, hack lab and remote research, but we could also have something like a gathering. Um, we still, we have the local network now, we promoted the topic. So I would really invite to, we could do something in the region. It could be Maribor, it can be Zagreb, it can be Ljubljana. Like there, we kind of connected to a few local scenes now to do an event, like a small regional gathering Inviting people from Europe is, is relatively easy and also locally, there is some fantastic projects there. So this is, was a bit the goal um, that this is more the hack lab session to connect to people and then maybe in spring and we still have some money left, but we could think of like, you know, having a 20, 30 people gathering around open science hardware, maybe next spring. And I, th I also think it, it is really important that when we have this global gathering that we have these connected events like that happen half a year earlier. So we have something to talk about when we meet.